Well, let's start from the beginning. Thank you very much for the opportunity to say a few words here today. Uh, my name is Ned Ryan Doyle, and uh, I was very pleased to be invited and had to change some things around, and then they changed this around, so it all worked just fine. And I rode up here with uh, my friend Ted from uh, Asheville, North Carolina. I know some of you know me well, but not everyone. Uh, and it's relevant, I hope, to what I'll try to say here is that uh, back in 1979, I started working with the Mother Earth News Magazine's Eco Village Research Project up in the mountains there, building solar homes, putting together solar hot water systems, and developing wood gas powered trucks, and sustainable systems across the board, all sorts of things. It was a really wonderful experience. I got paid to do stuff I would have paid them if I had to, to be able to learn how to do it. So it's kind of a reverse college of sustainability. And over the years, I've been very involved, primarily with building and energy, but I try to get involved with all aspects of sustainability and planning and transportation and so on. Uh, skipping ahead a little bit. Uh, uh, because I have wonderful adventures in between, but again, I live, how many people here live off grid and get all their energy from the sun? You got one, and the other, two, that's two of us. <laughs> two of us, all right, you can do this, you can do this. Uh, and I do the dope my place and so on. It's cheaper and it's more reliable. I'm very fond of saying in about 14 years of living off grid, I've only lost power three times and it was because I disconnected the batteries to maintain them. Not bad. Uh, in 1999, I got the idea for what turned into the Southern Energy and Environment Expo. And it was, when it began, I was working kind of collaborating with uh, the Western North Carolina Alliance and Back Home Magazine, and a number of other folks around the Western Carolina region. And what I proposed, I said, we need to have an event to bring in the regular people, as well as the choir. Go ahead and start singing a few notes. Here you are. Lovely. I said, we've got to connect the dots between energy, environment, and economics. Well, even, thank you, now you guys got to figure it out now, in 1999, some of the most wonderful environmental and energy people I knew, and they still are wonderful, you can't do them all at the same time. They're different things. And what are you talking about? It's three sides of the same coin. Well, the upshot is that I negotiated down in order to get the event going to the Southern Energy and Environment Expo, and I promised I wouldn't mention economics. Well, uh, that ran for 10 years very, very successfully. And now, and I, I put some of these up in the break room and the tabling area. Uh, after 10 years, I stopped the Southern <coughs> Energy and Environment Expo to basically take a breath and think it over. And it's back now, it's gonna be September 14th through 16th in Asheville, North Carolina at the Civic Center. We will probably double the size of the previous event uh, it's on track to do that right now. It's, it's somewhere in the range of 300 exhibitors, all promoting green living. Now, okay, that sounds like shame, shameless commerce division here for an event coordinator. I guess it is a little bit. But the point is the changes I made in the event for this new around <coughs> all focus essentially on sustainable economy, sustainable economics. And it's, it's really sparked it. And so what Courtney brought us in here with all the numbers, I'm gonna spare a lot of that. Um, and I will talk about energy and efficiency and so on, but I think most of you understand that. But at any rate, all the years that I've been anti-nuke, I've also been pro-sustainability. And I looked through the, uh, the agenda, we just, we drove out this morning and got here today, but excellent information-packed programs that you guys have been going through and gals. Uh, 
but they're almost all creative nonviolence. That's what I really missed. I, I would have liked to see that. Uh, all the rest of them, with, with love in my heart, are just focusing on the problems. We need is a movement. If, if we want to stop the nukes, which everyone does here, it's fine. We have to offer sustainable options that people will resonate with. We can't just, and I've had this for years. We have to know the serious problems. We have to understand MOX. We have to understand the science of it in order to have intelligent discussions with some of the people, how's that for being charitable, that are sent out to argue with us. So we need to know that. But we also, for the general public, have to be able to offer something else to say, here's the replacement for it. It's a human nature thing. It's, and it's sad, but I think many of you have seen this. Everyone who cares about the kids, everyone who cares about this on a spiritual level, everyone who cares about it environmentally, passionate about it, is already on board to stop the nukes. It just went, we're, it's done. What we're faced with is the fact that we are, we remain a minority. The majority cares about the money. And we have been handed, in a manner of speaking, in my view anyway, in the last two to three years, a golden opportunity to take that weak spot, the economics of it, and go with it from there. The re recession, don't get me started on that, the theft of Wall Street and all that. But the recession, the Tea Party movement, smile when you see the pointy hats, because they're on your side, they're wild about taxes and so on. And I have had more luck in the last two or three years dealing with the general public, the average folks. I also do a weekly program called Our Southern Community on Energy, Environment, and Economics dealing with the regular people that are unaware of all the details that we know and we're aware of, when you think, well, you know, they say, well, you know, the radiation will fry the babies. They go, well, let's do better. Yeah. Radiation's gonna fry the babies and you gotta pay for it. Huh? Say what? <laughs> what are you talking about? We gotta laugh, but this is the kind of stuff I get back. <laughs> and, and you expect it, well, you know, you're, you're against tax credits for solar. Oh, yeah, we can't have the government spread around it. You hear them carry on. You've got to let them go for a while just to kind of let the steam <laughs> on them. You don't interrupt them right away. You trust me on that one. Let them work. You know, one deep breath or two. Then you kind of jump and say, well, how about $80 billion for the nukes? And it, sometimes you can hear the pin drop. The walls just, what? Oh, you want a level playing field, huh? And you just and bring up the economics of it. Now, the, the numbers that Courtney showed uh, are basically for construction only. I did an interview about three years ago now with the vice president for uh, Progress Energy. And the same type of numbers. I don't remember all the numbers exactly. But in the course of it, I said, and at that time, it was $7 billion that they were talking. It's gone up since then. And I said very sweetly, I said, $7 billion, that's a lot of money. So, oh, well, we've got a lot to build. And I said, oh, that's true. And I said, well, $7 billion, does, does that include the fuel? They go, oh, no, 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 that, that's an operating cost. I said, oh, okay. $7 billion, does that include the security issues around terrorism? And, Oh, no, 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 those are operating costs. And so well, does this include the insurance issues and safety and the back? Oh, no, 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 those are operating costs. I said, well, what about waste storage? Oh, no, 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 those are operating costs. And it went on. It's a record. It's, it's archived, if I say it. And you just kind of like, nyeh, nyeh. So this is only construction. And the bottom line is you can't figure out how much it costs for nukes today because no one can count that high. We just we know, we know what's in sight. And so only economically, it's mind-blowingly stupid to be doing nukes. It's it just it's as simple as that. And the and there's some and I'm I'm keeping it on a kind of cheerleader lighter level here because the the numbers are out there. And if I mean if I put together a PowerPoint with all these numbers and all this stuff, you guys would be out cold on the floor in about four minutes. There's too many numbers. You just spin and they play with them. 
But the point coming back to where, uh, where I'm here to encourage you on is that there is absolutely no way on this planet that solar and wind is the same cost or more than nukes. It's insane. It's not. It's cheaper on every count. Right now, and, and again, it's a broad statement here, but right now it's cheaper to go out and buy solar PV panels at retail, at retail, no discount, megawatt for megawatt, than it is to even begin building a new, new plant. Just go out and buy them at retail. If you don't need, no tax credits, nothing. Just put them in at retail, it's cheaper. And you don't have the waste, you don't have all these other problems, everything we know about. we creating local jobs with local energy, getting it. And I, and, you know, and, and, <laughs> See, I get it pretty excited. I've been living this way for 25, 30 years, and it's great. It's fantastic. You know, they'll say, you know, they see the beard, and they say, oh, how do you live alone in the woods like that without utilities? Uh, you know, they get this picture of me in a teepee going out to the, you know, to the creek to shower and stuff. And I, I said, well, I do pretty well. I, when I get back from a day out in the asylum, which is what I consider any place not my property. <laughs> they're out there, they're all, I go back from a day in the asylum, I come in, I turn the light on, I go over to the refrigerator, pull out a beer, start up the laptop, maybe put on a video, and oh, how'd you do that? <laughs> you just flipped a switch. No, no, I mean, without power. I got plenty of power, I just not connected to the utility grid. It's a great line. And, and, and another thought in, in terms of this whole thing, because I want you to go with some enthusiasm here, don't get sucked into the, the language, the terminology, which we all do it every once in a while. Stuff. It is not alternative energy to have solar and wind. The sun is the source. Fossil fuels are an alternative. Nukes are an alternative. We've been on this planet for three, the planet was 3.5 billion years. And if you're really strict. Well, whatever the time is. Okay. Oh, yes. Now, as we say, everyone's on. Like, there's some discussion about exactly how many billion. I'll go with it. I love you, Missy. And then everyone's on the handle go up and say, no, it's only 6,000 years. That's, a whole, that's another whole good story right there. Whatever okay. it is, it makes no difference. Exactly. Whether, whichever way it goes. If, if the alternatives are what we're doing now. We're running out of them. It's sustainable energy. It's sustainable, affordable energy. Because when you get trapped in that, well, what's an al well, that's alternative energy. That makes people think, oh, well, then what we have now is normal. This is what we should have. And that's wrong. It's sustainable energy sustainable, affordable energy, and the, the big one, and I'm going to try to wrap up here quick with this so we can get arguments, discussion, whatever. The number one aspect of sustainable energy is energy efficiency. Uh, Hope Taylor uh, was hopefully going to be here, uh, but couldn't, and uh, somewhere here, uh, if someone wants it, because uh, I am, sometimes when I do college talks, they won't let me do it unless I bring a PowerPoint. So just in case, <laughs> I've got her energy efficiency uh, PowerPoint. And if you want to email me, I'll wait a week to see how many do. I'd be glad to email it out for copies of it. It's about a 12, uh, 20 shot thing on the energy efficiency programs around the country. But energy efficiency is the number one source of sustainable energy. It is the most cost effective, the most immediate, and the most important for us to push. I've got solar panels, I got a little wind tower I hope I'm putting up in a couple of weeks at my place. I got I can do all the The most important thing we need to push is energy efficiency because this provides us the window, the mathematical, the physical, the energy window to not put any more power plants online. Power demand has either leveled or gone down across the country, and the argument initially from the utilities, well, it's a recession. Everybody, I go, wait a minute, they're still turning the TVs on, if not more. Well, the reason it flattened and went down was because of energy efficiency measures across the board. Across the board. And it is for the first time in the history of the history of utilities, every year they counted on it going up. It leveled out and it starts going down, even though more people are hooking up. She's telling me to pass. Go quick. Uh, that tra ability to transition allows us the time to bring the solar and wind online to get into the mix. It's worth probably a whole talk, 
But trust me, push energy efficiency, the wind and solar is catching up, and then we can easily prove economically, morally, and spiritually no new nukes, no more nukes, and then deal with shutting them down.